For 29, we want to take R3 and then revolve it about AB. Um, so when we revolve R3 about the line AB, this is the line at x is equal to 1, um, we're going to end up with a disk, right, where the lower part of the disk, the inner radius, it touches this line here, the line OB, so this line goes like this, and this line is actually just the line y is equal to x, right? It's a straight line with a slope of 1 that goes through the origin. And then um, it touches the, the graph at the fourth root of x. So that's the, the other boundary of R3. So when we revolve it, it forms this disk, right? Um, so basically when we revolve R3, we're going to have infinitely thin disks all stacked up on top of each other across the y-axis and this is going to form a volume in the same way that if you stack up a bunch of washers you're going to have um, the cylinder with a hole inside so basically we're since we're stacking them up across the y-axis what we're doing is we're integrating with respect to y so our integral which is our sum it begins at y is equal to zero right here and ends at y is equal to one up here so it's going to go from zero to one and we're integrating with respect to y um, if we're integrating with respect to y, that means that we do have to uh, express these two functions that define the boundary, which is y is equal to x and y is equal to the fourth root of x as functions of y because we're integrating with respect to y. So for the first one, it's pretty easy. We just go x is um, we just go x is equal to y, and for the second one, we have uh, y. I have uh, let's see root. 4x is equal to y, and so I am just going to raise both sides to the fourth root, so x to the power of 4 is equal to y. Um, oops, no, I did this wrong. It should have been x is equal to y fourth, yeah. So now that I have these uh, equations as functions of y, I can now calculate my smaller circle and my bigger circle, right? Because the whole thing about summing up these disks is we're basically summing up the areas of the bigger circle, and then we're removing from it, we're removing these chunks of the area of the smaller circle. And when we do this, we do get the rings that we're going to stack up across the y-axis. So this is a1 minus a2, where a1 is the area of the bigger circle that goes r1, and a2 is the area of the smaller circle that has radius r2. Um, so let's think about how we actually get the area of the uh, bigger circle, r1, right? So a1... Um, and A1, let me just erase this so that you guys can see it clearer. So A1 basically goes from the center here all the way to where it touches the boundary uh, of R3, which is here, right? And you might be tempted to say, hey, that's just the function, but it's not, because we don't measure the function starting at 1, we actually measure it starting from 0, right? Uh, so if we measure the function starting from 0, we can, we can see here that... Uh, and actually, I'm just going to put arrows so that we can easily see these here. So, um, if we look at it, we can see that it, the orange curve is the the blue arrow, which goes from, from 1 to 0, and then minus the height of the curve, right? Minus the height of the function, which is this. So the green, uh, the green arrow is actually the height of the function because we measure it from zero. And we can see that the orange line that we want is not the height of the function, but rather it's one minus the height of the function. So think the blue line minus the green line will actually give us the orange line that we want, right? And this is the outer radius because it is at this point here that is going to give us the biggest part. Whereas the inner radius, it touches this other curve, y is equal to x, and goes like this. Um, so as we've seen, a1 is basically just pi times r squared, where r is the blue curve minus the green curve. So it's 1 minus, and the green curve is just the height of the function, right? Uh, and because we're integrating with respect to y, we're going to put it as y to the power of 4 squared. Um, and similarly, a2, we're going to do the same process. So... Uh, and let me erase this. So for a2, I want to go from ab all the way out to here. Now, this is not the height of the function because the height of the function is measured from 0 all the way out to here. So what I actually need to do to get this height is I go I sub go 1. It's a length of 1 minus this length. So it's this whole guy minus this length, which is going to give me the orange length, right? Um, 
So once more, this radius is the blue arrow, so 1, minus the green arrow, so that is uh, minus the green arrow, and this one, it touches the, the curve at the line x is equal to y. So just minus y, and then we square that, because it's r squared. So let me just expand this uh, pi, and I'm going to FOIL it, so that's 8 minus, let's see, 2y to the power of 4, and then that is plus 1, so I've just FOILed it. And for the second one, I'm also going to FOIL it, that gives me uh, y squared, and that is but minus 2y um, plus 1. So then when I do a1 minus a2, I'm going to still put the pi outside, so that gives me y8 minus 2y4 plus 1, and then minus y squared, and then minus minus gives us a plus, right? plus 2y, and then minus 1. So I'm subtracting all of a1, uh, sorry, all of a2 from a1. And then if I'm just going to simplify this, um, this gives me pi y to the power of 8 minus 2y to the power of 4. The plus 1 cancels out with the minus 1, so that goes away. Uh, minus y squared, and then plus 2y. So that's our um, a1 minus a2, the area of our rings. And we have to remember that all we're doing is we're summing up these rings uh, that go from here to here. We're summing them across the y-axis, right? Uh, so I'm ready to integrate this. So I'm going to put my pi outside because it's a constant, and I'm going to just copy this here. Uh, minus 2y fourth, minus y squared, plus 2y, and all of this times dy. So when I integrate this, this is pi outside, y to the power of 9 um, divided by 9 minus 2y to the power of 5 divided by um, 5 and then minus y3 over 3 and then plus 2y squared divided by 2, right? So that's just y squared evaluated from 0 to 1. So when I um, plug in these boundaries, I only need to worry about the upper boundary because the lower boundary is going to go to 0. So that's pi uh, 1 over 9 minus 2 over 5. Oops, 2. Actually, I wrote this wrong. I should have written minus uh, 2y fifth, right? Because then when I plug in 1 here, it's going to go to 2 fifths. And then this gives me uh, minus 1 third and then plus 1. Uh, once more, the lower boundary goes to 0. So then when I sum this up, this gives me, let's see, um, this will give me 17 pi over 45. Yeah, and that is the volume, the result of my uh, taking R3 and then revolving it about the line AB.